Hi everyone, Angela Mia De La Vega, Sculptor Artist here. We are going to be doing a tutorial of how to make a silicone mold of a clay sculpture. That mold will be used to make multiple castings in another material. Um, in my particular case, I'll use the mold to make a limited edition bronze sculpture. Um, we're going to be molding a life-size sculpture of a six-year-old little boy. So the whole process is going to take about three weeks. However, you're going to get the consolidated version in probably about 20 minutes long, I think. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's uh, get to work. All right, so this is where we start the mold process. We've got the sculpture finished in clay. And we're going to, we've studied this piece and we've decided how we're going to divide him up into uh, sections that can be easily molded individually. We're going to cut off the arm first. So we've marked the side of the arm so that whenever they put the arm back together on the body in the foundry, they'll be able to line up that little, that little uh, tag line. So here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next step, get the silicone mixture ready. We've got the hardener and silicone. It's 10% hardener with 90% uh, silicone. Okay, now we are going to apply the silicone mixture to the hand that and arm that I cut off of the sculpture. We want to start top down so that the silicone does its job of following gravity. While we're applying it, we also want to be mindful of any little air bubbles that seem to develop. We want to avoid air bubbles as those later will be pinholes in the sculpture. Time is of the essence because the hardening agent is already beginning to react. We're gonna to work to get a full coating of silicone, which will be our first layer entirely covering the clay sculpture part. We don't want to get this on our hands. Okay, now we've got a second coat that has um, already cured of the silicone covering the hand and arm. We're gonna take wax coated Dixie cup and I've already pre-cut these into some narrow strips like you see here, because the idea here now is to create sort of a lip or a division line of how we're going to create two sides of a mold that's encasing this clay arm inside. So with this wax strip now, wax paper strip, we've already got one on one side that are held in place by these little pins sticking it straight through. I'm gonna tape them together, creating a nice edge. We're gonna follow this the whole way up over the fingers, 
more in just a bit. Here we have, of course, the full sculpture. You can see got some nice division lines here, some good seams created with the Dixie cups and the holes have been cut for the keys. If you can see now the little plastic keys are in the holes. So now we are going to apply another coat of silicone. Well, actually a first coat to this wonderful seam that we've created with the wax paper cups. All of the keys have been put in place, the little plastic keys. Being sure to fill in the space so it adheres to the existing silicone on the sculpture part itself. Now on the reverse side of these keys, we are going to make sure that we fill those with the silicone as well because remember we're wanting these to be buttons that can lock one into the other. Now we've got the second coat of silicone fully covering the sculpture. And you can see those seam lines that I created with the wax Dixie cups. And in there, we do have those little buttons. You just can't really see them. To make the mother mold, we're going to use a material that's called freeform and here you see part A, part B. There are two different pastes that I need to mix together. Sort of like actually just making pizza dough or the crust of a pie. I'm gonna knead it on this table here. All right so here we have now the mixture of both of the pastes that I showed you in the jugs and some sculptors use um, plaster, others use fiberglass, um, some use something that I've used in the past which is called plastic paste that's kind of like this mushy mashed potato mix that when you put it on it, it uh, feels like you're just smashing mashed potatoes but it hardens into nice plastic. This is a material that I've discovered I really like. I get it from a local supplier called Reynolds Supply um, and it's nice because it, it it hardens like plaster and it protects your silicone mold like plaster does, but it's a lot lighter weight, so it's easier for them to uh, manipulate at the foundry, you know, to rotate it and lift it when they pour in the wax in the mold. It's also uh, not as heavy, and so it's less expensive for me to ship to the foundry. So now I've got it here mixed, ready to apply to the silicone mold. And if you remember, this silicone mold here has the arm inside of it with the hand. So these are the fingers that are splayed at the top. This is the arm of the boy that I cut off of the sculpture having a ball. You see the clay is still inside. Got the nice seam that we created with those plastic Dixie cups with the pins or the buttons, I mean. And now, with the freeform, we're going to create a protective mother mold. I love this stuff. It's so lightweight. Although mixing it together into an even consistency definitely is a workout for your arms. We want it to be about 
half an inch thick, or more like, let's say, three quarters of an inch thick. And something we want to do is create kind of a little little edge here sort of like you would with a pie we're going to do that the whole way around And of course, we're going to continue to do this over the whole thing, but we want to get a nice, smooth surface. So it just a little bit of water with part B and a smooth surface. And we will continue doing this on this side, let it dry, flip it over and do the other side. Here we have the full size sculpture and you see that the free form has been applied to the front side. We've got that beautiful clean edge that I was describing when I was showing you how to apply it on the hand and arm. And just a little ways to go back here. That's B, by the ways, and Rocky's over there. We've got the mold all done, ready to open. Before we do that, we're going to drill some holes that go the whole way through on the edging or that seam line that we've created. This is so that we can uh, put some uh, bolts and uh, screws in to keep two halves together. This is a lot easier, easier in this material than uh, plaster. Is, this is the exciting part. It's all exciting. We're going to open the mold now. And honestly, it's already been loosened up because this actually takes a lot of muscle grease. But going with these instruments like this and create a nice wedge. And then, of course, you're going to go in along the sides and loosen it up and open it up to release the mother mold from the silicone mold. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Here's the big guy with the mother mold having been opened now. You see both halves of the mold from the ball with this wonderful hardened freeform material. It's nice and thick and sturdy, but Definitely light enough for me to handle with one hand, unlike a plaster mold. Okay, so I'm going to show you what this mold looks like now, completely open. Look at that. There is the arm, and we've got a perfect 
register of the fingers, the lines in the knuckles, the fingernails inside. Removing this hand. We're going to reuse the clay now. So you see both sides of the mold. This is, these are the keys for the button locking system that we created. Inside that wonderful edge made with the Dixie cut line. Close it back up, locking those keys together. <clears throat> we'll go in there and put some screws and nuts and send this with all of the other parts to the foundry. Here we see a close-up of the fingers. We've got a nice elbow right there. Opening the silicone mold. Okay, the mold is finished. That was a fun process. And now I'm going to ship it to my foundry of choice. And hopefully in about 12 weeks, I will have a finished sculpture that I can share with you. So more later. Thanks so much. Bye.